We're gonna start this puppy up. Clear, prop. And welcome back to Tip of the Week. This week, we're gonna talk about measuring small differences in air pressure. Now why would that be important when building an aircraft? One example is venting. Here I have a fuel tank and we know that fuel cannot leave the tank unless air replaces that space and we need to keep the space in this tank at atmospheric pressure or a bit above and one way to create a vent is to maybe put a hole in the top. Of course, that works pretty good for lawn mowers, but in an aircraft zipping through the air at 100 miles an hour or more, sometimes a hole doesn't work quite the way we expect it to. And we need ways to ensure that we actually do have proper vent pressure in the tank if we want a good fuel flow. And note that you can do all sorts of fuel flow tests on the ground without the aircraft moving and it'll vent just fine. But what happens when you're zipping through the air? Does that pressure remain the same? Or does it go up? Or does it go down in the case of suction over the top of that vent hole? Another example is cooling for our aircraft air-cooled engines. We have all sorts of baffling inside the engine compartment to make sure that our airflow is directed through the fins of the engine and doesn't escape into other areas. And one way to be able to test whether or not we have all of those nooks and crannies sealed off properly is to be able to measure small differences in air pressure before and after we attempt to seal up those areas around the engine. Well, every once in a while, a smart and gifted person comes along and builds an aircraft and comes along with a way to measure something better in a way that probably hasn't been done before. And this week, we're going to let one of those individuals, Clint, talk to us about a way to accurately measure pressure. Hi, my name is Clint Gosh, and I'm here with John Croak today, and doing uh, doing a video on a uh, on a piece of test equipment that builders might find useful. Um, it's a, it's a low pressure measuring instrument known as a manometer. Um, and I found it useful for attempting to debug a, uh, a fuel system problem in my experimental uh, CH750 stool. Um, as you can see here, uh, this is just a simple manometer um, bought from uh, Amazon. I think I paid somewhere under $40 for it. Um, it has two inputs, a positive input and a negative, so it's a differential measurement. Um, and uh, how I chose to hook it into my aircraft to verify my fuel vending during my uh, troubleshooting process was to build a second fuel cap um, with my fuel vent tube that sits on top of the cap but with uh, additional brass fitting to, uh, to hook the manometer up to. So obviously the positive uh, port on the manometer would go to the fuel pressure cap uh, outlet and the negative which unfortunately is not marked here uh, check your uh, your uh, directions that come with the uh, the instrument um, the negative side I decided to plumb into the static port of the aircraft so I didn't get uh, errors induced by the slipstream uh, in the cabin same errors that you might experience if you don't have a, a good static uh, port on your uh, pedostatic instruments. Uh, another use for, for this tool uh, would be for 
checking to see how much pressure you're actually developing uh, on the uh, on the top side of your air-cooled aircraft engine uh, under the cowl. Um, you could very easily plumb in a, uh, a little brass barb like that uh, onto one of your plenums and have the reference stuck somewhere behind the engine in the, in the engine compartment where the, where the hot air is escaping. And you could actually make changes to your baffling, your cowling, and get a measurable pressure difference to see how effective that, uh, that change might have been. Uh, bigger the pressure differential, uh, the better. But it, uh, would probably mean you're getting more airflow through the cylinder fins. So the the cap was instrumented with just some uh, very cheap tubing off of again Amazon.com, and it uh, it hooks up to the fuel cap and it runs along the top surface of the wing to near the trailing edge, across the trailing edge, and to the wing root where you can loop it around and allow it to enter the cabin door. So with the tubes routed into the cabin, uh, you can place the manometer pretty much anywhere in the cockpit so you can view it easily while you're in flight. Uh, the pressure uh, tube uh, from the cap is entering the positive input to the manometer and the negative tube is routed into my pedostatic system for a, a good uh, air pressure outside reference. So I did notice a difference in pressure while in flight. Um, initially I had the tubes bent down just a little bit too much for the, the vent pipes coming out of the caps and I was only able to attain about a 0 0.075 PSI reading at 80 miles per hour. Through some experimentation on the ground, I was able to uh, increase that pressure by tipping the tube up more toward the direction of airflow, and I was able to attain a 0.13 PSI reading at 80 miles an hour on subsequent flights. While this didn't, didn't solve my fuel, uh, issue I was attempting to debug, it made me feel a lot better about my venting system and took a lot of the doubt out of was were my fuel vents actually doing what they were supposed to do. So this is a, a typical uh, Continental O200 install on a CH750. Um, one, one thing people sometimes struggle with is, is cooling their, their aircraft engine. And in this case, uh, since it's air-cooled, it relies on on a certain amount of uh, air pressure on top of the cowl or uh, on top of the engine here to, to force air down through the, the cylinder fins. Um, and uh, I, I did have some issues with uh, with playing around with cooling. Uh, nothing major, nothing got, got terribly warm. Um, but I did do a lot of tinkering on cooler days to try to optimize for, for hotter, hotter operations that we, we sometimes see here in Iowa. And um, uh, one thing I did was uh, attempt to, to seal up every single little nook and cranny I could with, with either uh, silicone baffling um, or the supplied uh, Zenith inner cylinder baffles, which are very important for directing air down around the cylinder so you util utilize all the cylinder head uh, fin area that you possibly can for cooling. Um, one thing that I, I always had difficulty with when I when I was making a change was trying to evaluate um, exactly how much of a change I truly made. Um, and you can you can verify that with with uh, with just monitoring the cylinder head temperatures. Um, but this is where another use of the the manometer might come in, where you can measure a very small uh, differential pressure changes. And one of the things I do intend on doing one of these days now that I have the tool is installing a pressure probe here, um, similar to what I did with my gas cap, and uh, uh, hook the manometer pressure side, positive side to that, and just leave the, uh, uh, the negative differential input uh, sitting somewhere in the engine compartment. And then go up and fly and take some measurements just to see how much pressure I actually are, uh, am able to, uh, to, to generate on top of the engine 
um, and then maybe make a few tweaks to the cooling, uh, maybe the inner cylinder baffles, or even the outlet um, lip at the bottom of the cowl, and then again do another flight, and we'll same, uh, same type of temperature day, same air speed, same altitudes, and just get a feel for, for uh, what changes make what kind of a pressure difference on top of the engine. And, and a greater difference, differential, means that you are drawing more air and cooling it better, theoretically? Uh, that's, that's what, the, uh, theoretically, that's what I've read online. Um, is, you, know, you don't want to be plugging up your cylinder fins, obviously, but the higher pressure you can get here uh, on top means the fewer uh, leaks or bypasses you have around your cylinder fins. Any air that's leaking around cylinder fins isn't carrying any heat away for you. And, and and the reason I feel the manometer might be worth a try is um, is it can measure very very small pressure changes, whereas uh, cylinder head temperatures are rather large numbers, um, and you might have made an improvement. You might have only changed it by a degree or two, um, but that's kind of hard to tell off of cylinder head temperatures alone. And, and, and what I found in, in trying to optimize the cooling I have on my engine is a lot of little changes can 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 add up to five or even to 10 degrees worth of cylinder head temperature or oil temperature change. Um, and I, I feel that, that maybe if I had a, a finer instrument to, uh, to measure, uh, measure a variable with, like uh, air pressure, um, I, I might be able to uh, optimize some of my baffling even, even further. Gotcha. Now here's a thought. For those of you with a tank in each wing, and you have them plumbed together without a valve, and you wonder why they don't both drain at the same rate. Well, it might just be that the vent pressure is different between the two. Well, now you have a tool that can be used to measure that vent pressure. And thanks to Clint for coming up with another affordable tool for our toolbox that we can use to experiment and make our planes better and safer and learn something in the process. So while we're getting our minds wrapped around all of that pressure stuff, let's get headed back to building.